Hello everyone. So my name is Be um, Dr. Rebecca Cliff and I am the founder and the director of the Sloth Conservation Foundation in Costa Rica. Um, we've never done this before, so we're not entirely sure it's working. Um, and we're relying on jungle Wi-Fi. So if you can see us, yay, people can see us. Hi, Owen. Hi. Um, okay, great. This is working. Awesome. Um, well, I want to say welcome and thank you for joining me today um, here in Costa Rica where it's very hot. Um, but I know you're all probably stuck at home and quite bored with the quarantine and the ongoing pandemic. Um, so we thought we'd try and brighten up everyone's day and let's have some fun and talk about sloths. Uh, try and get creative with your questions for me. Just submit them as I'm talking. Um, and we might not be able to answer all of them, um, but we will try our best and we'll pick the best ones and, and we'll get through as many as we can in the time. Um, so first, just before I, I start on the questions, let me just give you a little introduction about me and about the Sloth Conservation Foundation, which is what we're doing here um, in Costa Rica. So I started working with sloths originally 11 years ago now, um, and I was just an undergraduate student doing a degree in zoology, and I came to Costa Rica to do a research project and um, discovered that we've got this fantastically weird mammal that nobody knows anything about. Um, really, really very limited scientific research on sloths. Um, and in response, that's, that's causing a lot of trouble for people who are out here trying to help them through conservation um, and rescue as well, because it's very difficult to help an animal if you don't know anything about it. Um, so I began researching sloths in the wild and in captivity um, through a very long research project and Slowly over the years, we've learned an awful lot, and now we're putting that knowledge to use to try and help them in the wild and keep sloths safe um, for the future. So that's where we're at. Um, yeah, I've been out here for a very long time now in the jungle. This is my backyard. It's not a bad one. Um, there are actually sloths in the trees behind me right now, but I can't point them out to you very well um, because they're about 30 meters in the air and they look awfully like a bird's nest, um, so it won't be very impressive. Um, but yeah, let's get started with all of your questions. So um, yeah, feel free to get creative. A little challenge, try and ask me a sloth question that no one's asked me in the last 11 years. That will be a fun one. First, I wanna start with a couple of questions that we got asked on our Facebook page um, in the last 24 hours. So we'll start with Ava, who's 11 and she loves sloths and she'd like to meet one one day. She wants to know if they're scared of humans or friendly towards us. So that's actually a great question um, because sloths are, they're a prey species. So they really don't like any other animals very much at all because it's quite scary for them because they don't have any defense against a predator. Um, their main defense is to remain unseen. So as soon as they feel threatened, they do get very, very scared. Um, so with any sort of human interaction, they really don't like it. Um, but having said that, if you keep us a safe distance away and you give them lots of lots of space and you don't make any loud noises, then they really don't mind that they understand that you're not threatening them if you give them lots of space. Um, so that's why we always advocate if you do want to see sloths, just give them loads of room. Um, and they're absolutely fine. It's only when you go and try and touch them or you try and manipulate them in any way, they really do get very stressed out by that. So um, our next one comes from Amelia, who loves sloths and has 30 sloth toys. Oh, you've got more than me. Wow. Um, she would like to know how sloth fur feels. Is it soft or is it wiry? Um, okay, so when they're babies, sloth fur is very soft. Um, and yeah, they've got this sort of downy undercoat that's very silky to feel. As they get a little bit older, they start to get their adult fur, um, which grows over the top of the baby hair. Um, and that's a little bit more wiry and a little um, more coarse but it's still quite soft. It's softer than it looks. Um, but we don't advocate going and stroking sloths again because they really don't enjoy that. Um, but yeah, they're very, very soft and nice. So we've also got a question here from Kaylee who wants to know what sloths eat. That's a good one. Um, because 11 years ago when I first started doing all of this, nobody actually knew what sloths ate. There's some published research on this, um, but yeah, it was very, very unclear. There were some, some um, scientific papers that said that sloths like to eat bird eggs and small reptiles and things. 
Um, but we now know that that's actually not true. So sloths in the wild do eat a diet of leaves. It's quite boring. Imagine eating lettuce all day. That's basically what sloths live on. Um, they're two-fingered sloths, so the ones with that big pig nose and the blonde fur, um, they do have a little bit more of an exciting diet. They do add in some fruits um, and seeds and nuts and things when they can find them up in the canopy. Um, so things like green mangoes, they really enjoy almond seeds um, from the beech almond tree. So they do like to mix it up a little bit more, um, which is fun. And that gives them a little bit more energy as well from their diet. And they're a little bit more feisty. Um, the three-fingered sloths, they will only eat leaves and only leaves from very particular trees as well. Okay, so Amelia from California. Is it fun being a sloth scientist? Um, yes. Okay, so I love my job very, very much. Um, it's not what a lot of people imagine is because um, <laughs> you might imagine me out in the jungle all day, every day, surrounded by sloths. Um, but actually, I'll be in the forest and there'll be a sloth at the top of a 30 meter tree. Um, and I have to use the binoculars to see it and you get a sore neck and the sloths asleep all day, of course, um, because it's a sloth. Um, so you end up just getting bitten by mosquitoes an awful lot and um, getting very hot and sweaty. Um, and then spending a lot of time at the computer looking at the data and making sense of it all. Um, but I do love my job because I'm fascinated by what makes a sloth a sloth? So what is it that about them that, that makes them so slow? Why have they evolved into this really amazing lifestyle? Um, and what's going on there and how can we help them? So I really like to think about the problems and try and figure out a solution. Um, so I do really enjoy my job, but I don't spend much time actually with sloths, hands on um, sort of like with them physically. So yeah, that's mostly just sat on the jungle floor, which is not as great. Um, Janelle, so how many sloths are left in the world? Um, that is a very hard question because there's very few population counts on sloths. So think about this. Sloths, their main source of survival is to be unseen. Now they have been evolving to be masters of hide and seek for about 64 million years. It's a really long time. That means they're really, really good at hiding. Um, and as a human, we come along and we want to count how many sloths are in the forest over there. Um, we can't because we can't see them because they're at the top of the tree, huddled in a ball, um, and they're just hiding really well. So no one can actually do a very accurate population count on a sloth. You have to use some um, special techniques. We did have a plan to use a dog, a sniffer dog, to find sloths. Um, and then we can start to count how many there are. So that is an ongoing project um, to try and have a dog help us because they've got much better sense of smell than we do. Um, so that's an ongoing project, but I really can't answer that because we've got no idea. What I can tell you is in a healthy rainforest, sloths should make up about 50% of all of the mammals, okay? So of all of the the mammalian biomass we call it so if you put all the mammals together in a giant pile sloths should make up 50 percent of that pile that means there's a lot of them um in a healthy forest and that is how they manage to survive with not moving very much because if you've got lots of sloths all in one area you don't really need to move very much in order to disperse and find a new sloth to have babies with or any of that so um, it is very important that we do understand how many sloths there should be in an ecosystem. And then we can start to understand how what humans are doing now are affecting those numbers and what we should be aiming for as a healthy um, number of sloths to protect. There is a type of sloth called the pygmy sloth in Panama. This is fun. They're very small sloths. They're about the third of the size of a regular sloth and they live on one tiny little island in the middle of the ocean in Panama. Um, and there's some population estimates for those. Um, some people say there's a hundred of them. That's it. No more. Um, other people say there's more like a thousand of them. But either way, for that species of sloth, there really aren't very many of them at all. We have a question from Owen. Um, can sloths talk to each other? How do they sound? Okay. Um, 
Yes, they can. So baby sloths are famous for this. Now, when a baby sloth gets separated from its mom, so maybe it goes off climbing by itself for the first time and gets a little bit scared because they've gone too far away or they accidentally fall out of the tree and mom is up in the top and the baby's on the ground. Um, they need to be able to communicate with each other to get back together. So the baby cries. Um, I'm going to embarrass myself now and imitate this. Um, they sound a bit like a baby goat and it goes meh. <laughs> um, and mum hears that sound and she'll come back to the sound of her baby's cry. So they manage to reunite each other, um, re reunite together by the baby making this sound. Um, I have also seen an adult sloth make this sound. It was a female who um, her baby had fallen out the tree and sadly her baby um, had injured itself and, and wasn't alive anymore. But the mum was calling out to the baby as well. So she was going, Meh. Um, so trying to get her baby's attention. So yeah, it's a very mum-baby partnership. Um, we do sometimes get some adult sloths who communicate to each other as well. Um, particularly when it's a sloth who's looking for a mate. So they want to attract um, a, either a male sloth or a female sloth and, and bring them together. And the way a three-fingered sloth will do this is that they will vocalize. We call it screaming, um, which because it sounds a little, but a little bit like a human actually screaming. Um, it's like a very high-pitched whistle. Um, and that attracts the attention of all the sloths in the nearby area. Um, and they all start moving towards each other um, as a mating opportunity. So I'm not going to impersonate that one because um, I'll be too embarrassed. So Sammy, why are they so slow? You know, this might be my favorite question of them all um, because everyone thinks sloths are lazy, right? You think sloth, um, the world's laziest animal, they sleep for 20 hours a day or something. They don't. A sloth will only sleep for about 10 hours a day in the wild. And I bet that some of you back ho at home are sleeping more than 10 hours a day right now with the quarantine going on. Um, but sloths, yeah, they're, they're not that lazy. What they do is when they are awake and they're moving around, they're just doing everything um, so slowly. It's a little bit like they're swimming through a lake of Nutella. Okay, so like they can't move even their arms. They even blink slowly. Everything is very, very slow. There's a reason why, um, and it's to do with survival. So if you don't want your predators to know where you are, so say there's a jaguar looking for you and you're really careful trying to remain hidden in the top of a tree. If you start running around and making a lot of big movements, then your predators are going to see you and they're going to know where you are. If you move really, really slowly and really carefully, then you're not going to get seen by your predators. So it's a great way to survive. But also featuring into this whole story is the fact that sloths really don't have any energy at all. We've already talked about their diet. Sloths eat leaves, which is a little bit like you eating lettuce all day long. Um, and it takes a sloth, this is fun, it takes a sloth an entire month to digest one leaf. That is four weeks to digest one leaf. So that means they can't eat very many leaves each day. They're taking ages to digest them. They're not getting any calories or any energy out of their diet. So they really have to work hard to um, preserve the energy that they have as well. So that's another reason why being slow is a great idea for a sloth. So um, Donna's daughter, how long have you been working with them? How did you get started? Um, so I have been working with sloths for 11 years now, a long time. Um, and I got started a little bit by accident. So I was um, doing a degree in zoology at my university and I had to do a research placement and one of my supervisors um, knew a lady in Costa Rica with a sanctuary and a rescue center for sloths and she needed a scientist to come and help her. Um, so she, we, we came together. I came to Costa Rica to a sloth sanctuary, having never seen a sloth before in my life. Um, started a research project and never looked back um, and sloths have now taken over my entire life which is fun um so erica why do sloths have long claws so um yeah i like that that you've asked this one because a lot of people do think that the sloth's claws are 
um it's like like a dog's nails or like our human fingernail but it's not the sloth's claws are actually their fingers and they're just the the joints are stuck together and they are elongated and curved like this so it's a little bit like you having coat hangers for hands okay now if you're an animal and you don't have very much energy and you want to live up in the top of a tree it takes quite a lot of energy to push your body weight upwards or to stand upright um so sloths have just gone underneath the branch and they hold on with their basically with their coat hanger hands they hook on and they don't need to use any energy at all to hang in a tree so it's a great way to live and also save energy at the same time is by having these big long fingers and toes that just they dangle from um here's a fun fact so a sloth's hands they do lock into place so they are most relaxed when they are holding on to something that means they have to use energy to let go that is why a sloth can fall asleep just dangling from a tree branch um i actually challenge you all go and try and dangle off some monkey bars or something and see how long you can support your body weight for because i bet it's about 10 seconds um but sloths do this all day long without any problems and it's thanks to those amazing fingers that they have Clara, can we see a sloth? Um, there's a sloth in the tree up here, but it's we, we'd have to have a super zoom camera to see it, unfortunately. I do have my mascot here with me. Um, it's not a real sloth, I'm sorry. But it's Jim. Um, Jim is my best friend. <laughs> and um, Jim comes everywhere with us. So this is um, our substitute sloth for today. I know a lot of you probably were hoping I'd have a sloth here, um, but they really don't like they don't like human contact they hate it um and so for the happiness and the welfare of all of the sloths um that we do work with we're not we don't want to have to drag them down here and sort of have them on camera for you today um but if you do want to see one i do recommend you go to your local um zoo and lots of zoos have sloths in now and a lot of them do a lot of great work for conservation as well um so yeah look up your local zoo with a sloth and go and check them out um Clara, why do sloths eat hibiscus? So, so we like to say hibiscus. These are these pink jungle flowers. Um, hibiscus flowers are like chocolate for sloths. They love them. Um, and um, yeah, they, but we're not really sure why. I mean, it's it, they're quite sweet. A lot of animals eat hibiscus um, and it's very good for their stomach. Um, and yeah, they just really enjoy them. They like to eat the hibiscus leaves on the bushes as well. So they do enjoy that. Um, so yeah, that's just a, just a, a sweet little snack for them. Um, a lot of zoos also feed their sloths hibiscus and rescue centers. It's like a little treat. It's like cause having a chocolate bar. A um, little bit of extra energy in a sugary flower. Um, and Miranda, can sloths swim? Yes, they can. Um, sloths are fantastic swimmers. They they swim three times faster than they can move on the ground. So they're really, really amazing swimmers. Um, let's see, we've got Antonia. Do sloths travel in packs or are they more individual animals? Um, they are completely individual. They really don't like being with other sloths at all. Um, they do like to be live alone. I understand it's the self-isolation quarantine life. Um, they will hang out happily in a tree with another sloth. So if you see two sloths in a tree, it's not really weird. That's totally normal. Um, I think there's a lot we can learn from them. They don't have the energy to waste fighting over territory or kicking other sloths out of their area. There's enough leaves up there for everyone. Um, so they will happily share trees, but they do sometimes get into little arguments when um, there's a female who wants to mate and all the, the male sloths will actually fight over access to her um, and they get a bit grumpy then. But other than that, they, yeah, they just live alone, easy life. Gemma, how can we help sloths in the wild? Fantastic question. Um, so, it, well, what we do here is we try and protect what sloths need to survive. So the trees that they need to feed from, um, and then also, in, in urban areas. So there's lots of humans coming into the rainforest. Everyone loves sloths and they do like wildlife and they do try to protect it, but they do chop down some trees when they want to build a house or um, make a farm or something. Um, and the problem for sloths here is that un unless the, the trees that they live in touch and connect, then they're stuck. 
because sloths can't run and they can't jump. So they need, it's called canopy connectivity. They need the trees to overlap and then they can move from tree to tree. In even slightly disturbed areas, like around houses, you get little gaps and the sloths can't cross over. So they end up traveling on the ground um, or they end up traveling using um, things like electricity cables. So these are all really big problems. When the sloths on the ground, um, they do get harassed by humans, sadly. A lot of that is for people wanting to have photographs with them or to touch them. Um, and they get attacked by dogs. Um, very sad things. So we, um, the way we can help them is by trying to protect their habitat, plant more trees. We actually build little bridges between all the trees and where there are gaps so that the sloths can move around safely. Um, and if you're at home and you want to help sloths, then spread awareness. Talk to your friends and family. Uh, make sure everyone in your class at school knows about sloths and knows about the trouble um, that they're having in areas like Costa Rica where they just don't have any trees to live in anymore. Um, and then you can um, do something very simple. This will be a controversial one, um, but try and eat a little bit less meat in your diet. You don't have to go vegetarian, not, not at all. Um, but actually a lot of the rainforest is chopped down so that people can eat beef burgers because cows also need a place to live. So there's a lot of rainforest loss um, with that. If we all just eat a little bit less, then it is um, really great for the rainforest in countries like Costa Rica as well. Um, so yeah, we've got lots of things on our website about how you can help. You could even run your own fundraiser. Um, we have actually a free fundraising package for kids um, and it gives you loads of fun ideas about how to host your own fundraising event for the sloths. Um, and you can get involved in our work that way. So yeah, check out our website. I'll post a link um, in the comments after this ends um, so you can find it easily. Um, Jane, how can someone train to do what you do? Um, right, this is a hard one because there are no courses in sloth science. They don't exist. Um, but what I would say is get, a, for get an education in thing like zoology or um, biological science or even veterinary medicine or anything like that, um, a good biology degree and um, then get some experience. So come out here, work with us. We do offer internships and volunteer opportunities um, with sloth conservation. Um, so just try and get as much experience as you can. And the way I managed to train as a sloth scientist is just by making it happen myself. So I just did lots of fundraisers to raise money to fund the costs of the research. And um, I just just sort of figured it out as I went. Um, so it takes a little bit of courage. You have to maybe jump out your comfort zone a little bit and go to a country where there are sloths and see what experience you can get as you grow older. But definitely the first step in all of this is get a good education in biology um, and tropical biology and conservation and all of these important things. Um, and then you'll be able to use what you've learned at school um, and come out and get some experience with sloths with us. Jane, how long are they pregnant for and how many babies do they have? So we've got two big types of sloth, okay? There's something called the two-fingered sloth. Those are the ones with the pig, pig nose um, and the three-fingered sloth. Those are the ones with the masks around the eyes, the black raccoon face. Two-fingered sloths, these guys are pregnant for 11 and a half months. So a really long, long pregnancy for a quite a small animal. Um, and yeah, they have one baby at a time. And mum will actually spend about 12 months raising her baby, carrying it around on her body and teaching it all the skills they need to survive. Um, so it's a very, very slow rate of reproduction. Um, Three-fingered sloths, nobody knows the fun, the fun answer. Um, these sloths, you don't find them living in zoos anywhere and they don't survive very well in captivity. Like rescue centers really struggle with these guys. Um, so as a result of that, it's very difficult to know things like how long they're pregnant for because you really have to know when they got pregnant and when they gave birth. And that's very difficult for a sloth in the wild. So we're making some guesses and we do think it's probably somewhere between eight to 12 months for a three fingered sloth, but there's no science behind that as of yet. Um, and they also only have one baby at a time. Um, the reason why is because if they're carrying a baby on their body for a full 12 months and you're a sloth without much energy, 
you can only really carry one other sloth around. If you have twins or two babies, then mum's going to be so weighed down by her babies that she's not going to be able to take proper care of them. Um, so yeah, one baby at a time. How does a day in your life look like? I wish I could give you a really exciting answer to this. Um, I wish I could say I go into the jungle every day, follow sloths around. Um, but I, in reality, we spend a lot of time on the computer analyzing data, writing research papers, um, applying for funding so that we can do the jobs that we do. And that's all very, very important. But at least once a day, we do try and go out into the forest and we try and find some sloths that we do have with little tracking collars on. So these are collars that give out a signal. We follow the signal, try and find where they are, make sure they're okay, collect some data on them. So there is a little bit of sloth action out in the jungle. Other things that we might do on a daily basis are go out and plant some trees, um, really easy. We've got a forest nursery where we're growing hundreds of trees. Take them out, dig holes, put them in the ground. And um, we teach local children. So we go to schools and just like this, talk to the local children about sloths and how they can help um, and what is a sloth, things like this. Um, we'll go out and as I mentioned earlier, we'll build those bridges between trees I don't do that because I'm a rubbish climber. Um, but what I do is we send um, an awesome man that we, who we have who works for us called Gaio. He's a Costa Rican man and he's a fantastic tree climber with all of his ropes and his equipment. He can get up those trees and tie the bridges for the sloths in place. Um, so we do lots of that as well each day. So it's not all computer stuff, but it, um, it is a lot of it. Laura, what do you find hardest about your job? Um, that's a difficult question. Actually, I think the hardest part is being stuck at the computer for so many hours, because um, I really do love being outdoors in nature um, with the sloths, of course, in the jungle. Um, so the hours that we have to spend doing um, computer work aren't the funnest, um, but I do know it's very, very important. So it's like being at school and then having to do your homework. It's sort of like the, the boring bit of what you have to do. Um, but it's okay because we know raising money like that really helps us to do what we do every day. How many species of sloth are there? That comes from Susie and Nina. There are six species of sloth. Not many people know this one. Um, so you've got two types of sloth. You've got four species of, um, of three-fingered sloth. So the bradypus, those are the ones with the masks around the face. And you have two species of two-fingered sloth. Um, and they all occupy slightly different areas throughout South and Central America. But you do only find them in South and Central America in the wild. You don't find them in Africa or Australia or any of these places. And um, so six species split between two major groups. Karen from Australia. Hi, Karen. Are sloth habitats endangered around the world? Yes, they are. So sloths rely, as we mentioned earlier, on this continuous rainforest canopy. Um, in the national parks, they're doing fantastic. But outside of the national parks, sloths are really, really struggling to survive because of urbanization and development, and they just can't live um, alongside humans. Yet, part of our work is to try and find ways for sloths and humans to live side by side peacefully, because that will be the long term solution. So, that is our major goal. But yeah, every single day, people are coming in and chopping down more of the um, undisturbed forest. So it's just shrinking away into basically nothing. Um, and the sloths are really struggling. Um, so yeah, lots of sloth habitats are endangered. Um, it varies by country, of course. So um, in countries like Brazil, we've obviously had the big wildfires um, last year. That's destroyed thousands of hectares of sloth habitat, which are going to take a long time to recover. And here in Costa Rica, I wake up every single morning and hear chainsaws um, cutting down trees that might be 200 years old. Of course, we're then planting trees, but they aren't going to be fully grown for a, another 50 or 60 years. So we are facing a very tough battle um, to try and stop habitat loss every day. Brian, lifespan of a sloth. Um, this is a fun one because we've got absolutely no idea. I'm not going to lie to you number um a lot of organizations and websites do like to just create something because they don't like to say we don't know i'll be completely honest no one has got any idea about that um shout out to paula at the halle zoo in germany she is the oldest sloth that we know of in the world she's 50 years old right now 
Um, but we have got no idea how long she's going to continue living for. Um, what we do know is that sloths live longer and healthier lives in the wild than they do in captivity. They're not well suited to living in captivity at all. And they have a very specific diet, which is mainly made up of fresh rainforest leaves. It's hard to get fresh rainforest leaves in zoos around the world. So they're on these artificial diets and it isn't as good for them. Um, so I am going to make a little suggestion. I think sloths might live for a hundred years. I'm just putting it out there. One day I'm going to do the science and find out the answer. But I'm telling you there's a hundred year old sloth somewhere in the rainforest. We just need to find them. Gemma, is the pet trade a problem for sloths? Um, yes, it is Gemma. And um, this is a really good question. Um, the pet trade is terrible. Um, not all over the world, in certain countries and certain states in, in America, North America, um, it is legal to have a pet sloth. So um, it's a problem because what's happening is in countries like Venezuela and Ecuador, countries in South America, um, some of them have quite slack laws on exporting live animals. So sloths are taken out of the wild and they're sent to um, places like Florida, for example. It's perfectly legal to have a pet sloth in Florida. Do not encourage it um, because all of the sloths in the pet trade, either they have been taken out of the wild themselves or their parents were taken out of the wild. They've been bred and then the baby has been sold off into the pet trade. Um, sloths do not do well in captivity, as we said, they don't like humans, they're not a domestic species, and um, they want to be living in the rainforest, that's where we need to leave them, because sloth numbers are falling very, very fast in the wild, the last thing we need is to be taking those animals and putting them in our homes as pets, um, so I say get a dog or a rabbit instead, um, let's leave the sloths in the wild where they, where they need to be and where they belong, and where they are healthiest and happiest as well. Are they related to any other animal? I wish we could do a poll. If I was um, more tech smart, I'd do a poll on here about what you think a sloth is related to. Because not many people know the answer to this. Let's have a little think about it. Was it a monkey? Is it a bear? Is it a marsupial, a type of koala? Um, well, no, it's actually something super weird called a xenothra. So <laughs> this um, is as a group of animals that include the two types of sloth, anteaters and armadillos. Okay, so sort of think about it like nature's weirdos all put together in one group, sloths, anteaters and armadillos. Um, and they're all grouped together because they all have the same strange joints in their lower back and they've got strange teeth as well. Um, so they, yeah, they're called a xenothra, which is actually spelt with an X. Google it. Um, I can't read this name. Um, Christy, age nine. Can you identify the difference between a male and a female sloth? This is fun. So again, we've got the two types of sloth. Okay. So the ones with two fingers on their hands, these are very difficult to tell, um, whether it's a male or a female, you have to have a little bit of practice, but if you look carefully, you can actually see, but it's not obvious. And I know there's some zoos all over the world who have been trying to breed two male sloths together for years by accident. Or they think they have two male sloths and then you walk in and one of them's had a baby. Um, so I know this happens quite regularly, but it is very difficult to tell the sex. The three fingered sloths, it's impossible to tell the sex when they're very, very young. But as they grow older, when they get to about eight months old, the males develop this really strange um, bright orange marking on their backs and um, it's called a speculum. That's the, the scientific name. It's like this bright orange patch of fur. Um, only the males get that. So um, if you see a sloth with a big orange patch on its back, then it's a male. Um, and if it's not got that, it's a female. Um, but you can't tell that until they're, they're adults. So when rescue centers get little orphan babies in, they have to give them names that can either be male or female because you don't know what it's got to turn out to be. So it's a bit of a gamble. Janelle, where are sloths most common to be seen? Um, okay, so sloths again are all over South and Central America, sort of from Honduras down. Um, within a, This is scientific. Within about 17 degrees of the equator. So they need to live in places where the, the weather is always nice and warm because they can't regulate their own body temperature. 
So they live in these warm tropical places. Um, and it depends which country you go to. In Costa Rica, where we are right now, a lot of people um, know Costa Rica is the best place in the world to see sloths. That is because there's a lot of development happening and the sloths can easily be seen sort of crossing the roads or climbing along the, the telephone lines or um, in your garden, in a bush. Um, so you do see them very, very easily, but that does not mean it's good. Um, unfortunately, we do suspect that in Costa Rica and countries with a lot of development, you see the sloths easier because they are not able to um, go and hide at the top of the rainforest trees where they should be. They're being pushed into urban areas and that's where we do see them. In Brazil, I went to uh, sure once to find a type of sloth in Brazil. That is one of the most endangered types of sloth um, called the main sloth. And we spent, I think it was 180 hours in the jungle looking for these sloths. And uh, out of all of that time, we only had one hour where we actually saw a sloth because they were all at the tops of these really high trees and they're super difficult to see. Um, so yeah, it just depends where you go, but where, 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 is, where is it best to see them? Probably Costa Rica. Come and visit us. Um, Leo, what's your favorite sloth? Um, I do have a favorite sloth. He's called Bojangles and you can actually adopt him through our website. Um, he is my all time favorite. Don't tell the others. Um, Bojangles and me have a very long history. Um, I love him. He hates me because I'm that annoying scientist who followed him around for years and years. Um, uh, but I tagged him when he was a, almost a newborn baby with a little tracking device. And we followed him while he grew up and while he found his independence. Um, he's played a lot of tricks on us over the years. Um, and yeah, we know him very, very well. He's my all time favorite because he once grabbed hold of this finger and he didn't let go. And when sloths grab onto something, then if unless they want to let go, you're not going to be able to make them. They're very, very strong, stronger than any human out there, I expect. And um, he grabbed onto my finger and he didn't let go. And I've now got no sensation down the side of my index finger because he um, permanently damaged my, my nerves in my hand. And the whole time that he was holding onto my finger, he was smiling at me as well. Um, so, yeah, I love him, but he doesn't like me very much. Erica, how big can sloths get? So uh, the two-fingered sloths are definitely bigger than the three-fingered. Um, the three-fingered sloths get to be about six kilograms, and they're about the size of um, a medium, uh, a small dog, so a small, medium-sized dog. The two-fingered sloths, they do get to be about um, eight to nine kilograms, and they're probably about the size of Jim here, actually. Um, so this would probably be about ooh, the size of an adult two-fingered sloth. He's got a lot of fur, but um, they're actually quite skinny underneath all the fur. Sloths have very little muscle mass. Their, their skin and bones, fantastically strong, but just a lot of hair. So they look really, really big. Um, so um, we've got, how long does it take for the moss to grow in the fur? You know about the moss. I'm so impressed. Sloths do get, um, it's not actually moss, but it's very similar. They get algae and fungi, or fungi, depending where you're from, um, growing in their fur. And this is fantastic. There's about 70 different types of um, algae and fungi that grow in sloth fur that don't grow anywhere else on planet Earth. Um, and some of those types of sloth fungi are actually active against breast cancer and are being used in scientific research right now. The reason why they get that algae is because it turns them green. So they live in the tree. They move slowly like a tree um, and they look like a tree because they're green. So fantastic way of survival. Um, and they get that algae when they are a little bit older, once they've got their adult hair um, and after they've spent a little time living in the rainforest and hanging out with wild sloths, that's when they start to get the algae. They do have to be around wild sloths before they'll get it because um, that's the only place in the world these types of fungi and algae are found is in the fur of wild sloths. That's why sloths in zoos and in rescue centers don't have the algae in their fur. Stephen, do sloths become aggressive during breeding season? Um, so firstly, we're not sure there is a breeding season. Um, no one knows. Again, if you want to be a sloth scientist, come and help us find out the answers to all these questions. Um, we know around here where we are, there is no breeding season. Sloths are mating and giving birth all year round. And that's because there is no seasons in the tropics. 
we right here where we are we have a little bit of a wet season but mostly it's just hot and rainy and sunny all year round very unpredictable in some areas you do get rainy seasons and dry seasons um so there we might have seasonal breathing in the sloths but it's not been scientifically proved yet um do they get aggressive yes they do um if a two male sloths are fighting over access to a female what will happen is <laughs> they will try and knock each other out of the tree that is the aim of a sloth fight um they sort of bash each other and um, hang off of each other and try and knock each other out but sloths can fall from a hundred feet in the air and they survive because they're used to falling out the tree they fall out the tree all the time um so yeah knock your opponent out the tree and then you get to be up there with the female sloth and you can mate and have babies and your opponent is all the way down on the forest floor and he's stuck um pretty good strategy if you're a sloth kelly is there a beneficial relationship between the sloth and their habitat for trees yes so um sloths what they do is they eat the leaves and they spend a full month digesting them in their big four chambered stomachs and then they climb all the way down to the forest floor once a week and they go to the bathroom so yeah sloths only go to the bathroom once a week they do it at the bottom of um rainforest trees so they are taking the leaves digesting them and then pooping them out on the floor um, and what they're doing is actually recycling the nutrients in the rainforest so they're digesting it, pooping it out on the floor. The tree then gets to absorb those nutrients, like fertilizer, and then can um, produce more um, uh, leaves and fruits and things. So it is very beneficial. If you take sloths out of the ecosystem, um, the, we suspect, never want to try this, but the entire ecosystem is going to fall apart. Because as we mentioned earlier, sloths, there are loads of them in a healthy rainforest. They should make up 50% of the biomass. Um, so if you take something that huge out of the rainforest, all of the other animals who live around them and alongside them are gonna suffer um, because there's a lot of leaves that then aren't being eaten and digested um, and pooped out again. Fun fact, a sloth will lose 30% of its body weight when it poops, go figure. And they smile while it happens. Shelly, does the algae and fungi make their fur smell bad? Um, okay, no, this is a surprising one. A lot of people think sloths might smell. They don't. If you smell and you live in the rainforest, all your predators are going to be able to smell you and they'll find you. So sloths smell just like the trees that they live in. A um, bit like an old book. Fantastic. Um, yeah, no, no body odor at all because they also don't sweat. Um, so they're not producing sweat. They don't smell. Um, really lovely. Kaylee, how many babies do they have at once? Did we answer that already? No. Um, so uh, sloths have one baby at a time. Sometimes they will have twins, but we do suspect that they will leave um, one baby behind if they have twins, because mom doesn't have the resources or the energy to raise two babies at once. So it's just one baby, one mom. They stay together for about 12 months, and then they separate and go off and live their separate lives. Owen and Mallory, hello. How long does it take to digest their food? So sloths spend four weeks digesting their food, 30 days. We did discover that as part of our research. Um, we fed some sloths some something called carmine red. It is a, a special dye that is made up um, from natural beetles. So it's from beetle scales, um, so it's uh, completely harmless. We dyed some leaves red and then fed them to some sloths. And we waited till they did a red poop and it took 30 days for a red poop to come out the other end and um, fantastic laura do sloths struggle with temperature regulation when it is colder they do i'm so impressed you know this they do um so sloths are actually struggling because of climate change no one's talking about this really but it's a big thing that's on our radar right now because sloths can't regulate their own body temperature so like as a human, if it gets too hot, you'll start to sweat. If you get too cold, you start to shiver. Can't, sloths can't do either of those things. So when it gets too hot, they get too hot. And if it gets too cold, they get hypothermia. So they get too cold as well. Um, so yeah, when we have these long cold spells, um, they actually get very, very cold. And all the, the bacteria in their stomach that they use to digest their food 
that all dies and they um, sloths can starve to death on a full stomach if they get too cold because they're still eating the food, but they can't digest it. Um, and in the same way with climate change, everything's getting hotter and drier and a little bit more wild in the tropics. We're getting really cold spells and then really hot, dry spells like today um, where we don't have any rain for a long time and the sloths can't cope. They need fluid in their diet like we all do. Um, and the, the trees are drying out, they're shedding their leaves, the sloths aren't getting the fluid they need, they're having to come down and drink from rivers a lot more than they like to. Um, so yeah, that's something that we are looking at now is the effects of climate change. Antonia, what are the natural predators of sloths? Um, so they are number one, humans, unfortunately. We are causing lots of problems, um, but beyond humans, they are the big cats like jaguars and ocelots and pumas. They love sloths. Um, and also we've got snakes and birds of prey, like the harpy eagle, for example. Um, those are a, a, a historically um, the sloth's biggest predator. There aren't any harpy eagles left in Costa Rica. I wish there were. Um, they're actually extinct in this country, we think. Um, but these are huge birds with ginormous wingspans and their talons are the size of a grizzly bear's claws. Um, so imagine that. These fantastic birds of prey will hunt on them as well. Um, but other than that, sloths, yeah, they just live a quiet life and they don't have too many problems with predators um, beyond the, the trouble from humans. Erin and Isla, do they need to drink? How do they drink? So they do need to drink and a lot more at the moment because it's been so hot and dry in Costa Rica. Um, they're coming down to rivers and what they do is they hang from a vine and they lick just like a dog would, like they lap the water from the surface of the river um, and hydrate themselves that way. Why do sloths poop on the ground? This is the ultimate question, isn't it? And again, I will be completely honest with you. Um, no one has got any idea. Um, <laughs> you will see lots of different theories about this on Google. Um, people like to make things up, as we know. Um, so yeah, that honestly, from a scientific perspective, we do not know. Um, there's some theories, again, some people say it's to avoid predators smelling their poop. Some people say they're trying to fertilize the favorite trees they like to feed from. Other people say it is to do with um, getting moths we've not talked about sloth moths yet but sloth, so there's a type of moth that lives in the fur of a sloth that doesn't live anywhere else on planet earth and it is called a sloth moth try and say that 10 times very difficult um sloth moths and what happens is when a sloth comes down the ground down the tree to poop when it's pooping all of the sloth moths that live in its fur run off its body they lay their eggs in the sloth's poop and then they run back on the sloth before it climbs the tree again. Some scientists think that the moths in, um, the sloths come down to poop, so the moths have a place to breed, um, and they go on the sloth's body, and that in turn gives the sloth more algae in its fur, very complicated, more algae in its fur, um, and that either gives the sloth more camouflage, which is great, or some people say the sloth eats the algae, now, I've worked with sloths for 11 years, and I know a lot of other people who've worked with sloths for a very long time as well, and none of us have ever, ever seen a sloth lick its own fur or eat the algae from its fur. Plus, all the algae on a sloth grows on the back of its head and its neck. Um, so I can't imagine a sloth trying to lick the back of its own head, I'm going to be honest. Um, so yeah, I don't think that one's true, but it is one that you will find at the top of Google if you look this up. Um, I think it's to do with communication and marking territories, pheromones, pooping at the base of a tree um, leaves a little scent post. Um, we've got lots of data behind that, but we're still working on, on the science. So I can't say that that's definitely what's happening. But, um, but yeah, it's what I suspect anyway. Brighton, how long does a baby sloth stay with its mother? Um, it stays with its mom for, well, we think for a full 12 months. And um, there's some exceptions to this. Uh, my favorite sloth in the world, Bojangles, um, he got separated from his mom when he was just three months old and he survived um, by himself from that younger age. So there's some exceptions and we're still working very hard to understand it. Um, but yeah, we do suspect on 
After about 12 months that mum will carry baby around. Susie Esther has, hi Susie. Um, do spiders go on sloths? <laughs> Oh, this has a story behind it. <laughs> I have a really big spider phobia, <laughs> which is embarrassing because I'm a scientist and I live in the jungle and I hate spiders. Um, but I can't help it. And there's been many times when I'm out tracking sloths in the jungle and I walk into spider webs and I have a little bit of a freak out. Um, but it just goes to show, do you know what? You can still be afraid of spiders or snakes or any of those things. And you can still do your dream job. You can still go out there. You just have to go through a few spider webs on the way. Um, spiders do not go on sloths, thankfully. Catherine, are you going to show us a sloth today? I wish I could, Catherine. Um, I really wish I could. But firstly, we don't, we're not a rescue center. We work in sloth conservation. So even though we do a lot of work with sloths, most of it is research and we work with wild sloths. My sloths don't like people very much. They're scared of us. Um, so it wouldn't be very fair for me to bring you a sloth here today and show you because it would be really stressing him out. There are some in the trees behind me. We've seen two this morning, um, but they're up at the top of a tree and would need a really good camera to zoom in and see them. Um, so I can't, we're a bit stuck. Um, what we will do for you is this week, we're going to make a video on our page. We're going to go out into the jungle with some cameras and we're going to get some footage of some wild sloths for you out there in the jungle. Um, but yeah, I can't show you a real one today. I can show you Jim, my best friend, fake sloth. But this is what we have to do. If you love sloths, you have to hold and touch and pet a fake one because real sloths don't want to be held, cuddled or petted. So this is what we all do when we need a sloth fix. We all cuddle a fake one. Thank you so much for all of the questions today, guys. Um, I know I've not been able to answer them all, um, but I do need to go out into the forest now because we've got a sloth with a tracking collar who we've not seen in about a week and we really want to go and make sure he's okay. So I do need to go into the forest before it gets too hot out there um, and try and find him.